Hi, I'm Ivy Cho with ABC Research Laboratories. This video is to demonstrate the do's and don'ts of environmental sampling. Now there are five different materials that you can use for swabbing. The first one is a wet sponge. This you will also receive some sterile gloves. The second one is a sponge on a stick. It literally is a sponge on a stick and you'll also receive some sterile gloves. The third one is a dry swab. It comes in a little container and it's completely dry. The fourth one that we have here is a wet swab. It comes in a broth already for you. The final one is generally used for carcasses and you will receive a template, a dry sponge, buffer solution where you're going to wet the dry sponge, and sterile gloves. And now I'm going to show you exactly how to use each and every one of these. Now before you start swabbing, there are a few things that you need to do. The first thing is to wear a hairnet, which I am currently already wearing. The second thing that you need to do is wash your hands with antibacterial soap. Now you're going to wash your hands completely all the way up to your mid-arm. After that, after you're all clean, you are going to put on some gloves which I already have right here. And these could be, uh, these are currently some nitrile gloves, but latex or anything that it is that you have. Laying around, I would use those. Clean, of course. And then when you get back to your station, your swabbing target area, you're gonna go ahead and grab yourself a Sharpie and your materials and a trash pit. Now my trash can's already right here. First thing you're gonna do is label your target area. Now this is called, this is a countertop. So we're gonna go ahead and label this countertop one, and I say one because you might be swabbing five or 10 different countertops. Now, I already went ahead and labeled every single one of my materials. The first one I'm going to show you is the wet sponge. Now, these already come with sterile gloves, so what we're going to first do is you're going to open up at a horizontal angle. You're gonna open this up right here and not open up the sterile gloves yet. Put that aside on a, on a fairly clean area. Now when you, op when you are opening this, if your sponge is all the way to the bottom, you need to push it all the way up. Now I still have a little wiggle room, so I'm going to push it all the way up. And then what I'm going to do, I'm not gonna open it like this, because if I open it like this, anything that's in the air, the spores might go straight into the back. And we wanna prevent that. So what we're going to do is open it at a horizontal um, direction. So. You're going to open these up, and these little ties right here will keep the bag open. So what you're going to do is you can go ahead and just lay it on a clean little surface where the sponge does not touch, and you also want to be careful not to open, not to touch the little opening right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take off one of my gloves, the one that I'm going to um, put sterile gloves on. So what I'm going to do is open up the sterile gloves, and be very careful when I, I'm gonna bring it straight up and I'm only gonna touch the opening of these. Now, I'm gonna, there's two of them in here just in case that you accidentally drop the first one. And we'll put this back down where nothing is being touched. And the only area that you want to touch is the, the top of this glove right here, just so you can put your hands in it. So, and be sure to Put on your gloves at a horizontal direction because if you have it open like this, anything that's in the air is going to get in as well. And be careful not to touch any surface area because these are sterile gloves. Now that we have this on, we're going to pick up this bag right here and we're going to take out the sponge. You're going to be very careful when you, when you bring this out. Now, we're going to drop it down and we're gonna drop down the bag, or you can hold it, whichever way you prefer, but just be sure not to open it like this. You wanna make sure it's on a horizontal direction. Now, what we're going to do, however way that your environmental uh, monitoring program is laid out, you are gonna go ahead and, um, for this example, what I'm going to show you, on one side, you're going to swab in the vertical direction about 10 times. Then what you're going to do is flip it over. And you're gonna be very careful when you flip it over. As you saw, I just flipped it over. And now you're gonna do it at a horizontal direction. And you're just gonna go like this. And now you're done. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to pick this up and you're going to put it right back in. You're going to be very careful. And what you're going to do, you're going to close it up and you're going to try to take out as much air as possible. And when you do that, you're going to bring over these tabs one by one to close it up. And when you get to about there, you're going to go ahead and bring these two together and you're going to tie them. And we like for you to do this only because during shipment, this tie could come apart if you didn't tie it this way. Now the next material I'm going to show you is the sponge on a stick. Just like the wet sponge, it comes with sterile gloves. Now, and this is already labeled countertop two. Uh, the other one previously was labeled countertop one. So same thing, you're gonna make sure that you open this at a horizontal direction. So, because you do not want any spores to come in. So we're gonna break off the sterile gloves. You can put it off on a clean surface and we're gonna open this up. And you can open it up with these red tabs right here and it kind of makes it easy for you. Just break that open. Make sure you leave it at a horizontal angle. And this is really great because this has a stick. So it's gonna make um, life a little bit easier for you. Now, we're gonna put that aside so we can go ahead and open up our sterile gloves. Now, we're gonna open this up. You're gonna take off your other gloves. And like I said, when you open these, you wanna make sure not to touch any part of the glove other than the opening. Now, I'm gonna put this off to the side and I'm gonna put my glove on. And the next thing we do, we're gonna pick this right up and we're gonna take it up by the stick. Be careful not to touch the edges. And what we're going to do, same thing like we did with this, uh, the wet sponge itself, you're gonna go ahead and swab at a, let's say a vertical, first 10 times, and I only do 10 because that's just a good rule of thumb, but this is however way that your environmental mo monitoring program is laid out. Now we're gonna flip this over, and we're gonna go at a horizontal direction. Now we're done. There's a little dip right here that's gonna help you break off the stick when you put it inside the bag. You don't wanna break it off before you put it into the bag. So, I'll show you exactly how to do it. We're gonna take the bag, be sure not to touch the outside of the bag, and you're gonna hold it. And you're gonna break it right off. This is trash, you do not need to send this back. So I'm gonna dump that. Now the next thing you're going to do, you're gonna try to expel out as much air as possible. Same as the wet sponge. Now we're gonna push it down and we're going to fold so as you can see, we're gonna go all the way down, and then just like the other one, we want to ensure that nothing is going to spell out or anything's gonna go in, so you're going to push the middle, and you're gonna bring it across, and you're gonna go ahead and tie it off. And this will help during shipping. Here we have a dry swab. Now the dry swab already labeled countertop three. Now, generally when you receive this, it will come in a plastic container right here. So when you label, you're just gonna rip this off and you're gonna label it. And the only reason why these do not come with sterile gloves is because you're just going to be touching the tip. So any type of clean gloves will be just fine. So what we're going to do, just like the others, you do not wanna open this at a vertical angle just because of the fact that there may be spores in your environment. So you can either do it at an angle or directly as a horizontal direction. So here we go. We're gonna pop this open and be sure to Touch this little plastic area because it's gonna help you hold the swab. You do not wanna touch the inside here. What we're gonna do here is we're going to go ahead and do a small little section. Generally with dry swabs or wet swabs, you do about a two by two um, inch target area. Now, this is just an example. However way your environmental monitoring program is laid out is the way you should do it. With one side, you're gonna go ahead and do it as a vertical direction at a, uh, about two inches worth. And then you're going to flip it around on the other side of the swab. And you're gonna do a horizontal direction. Same little area. 
two inch by two inch, and now you're done. So now what you're going to do is you're going to directly put this in, push on the plastic cap, and you can either leave this here, that's just fine, but if it makes it a little difficult during shipping, you can go ahead and just break this off. Now the fourth swab that we have here is a wet swab. Just like the others, you do not want to open this up as a vertical angle. And these also do not come with sterile gloves because you don't need it. All you're going to be touching is this cap right here. You're going to want to hold this at about a 45 degree angle. And I'm going to demonstrate to you how to open this. Now this is a screw cap, so it's going to be very simple. You're just going to open this up like this, and we're going to take it right out. And be sure not to touch the opening. Just like the dry swab, you're going to go ahead and do about a 2 by 2 inch target area. However, however way your environmental monitoring program is laid out, that's the way you want to follow. So, first what we're going to do on one side of the swab, we're going to go at a vertical direction. About 2 inches. And be sure not to go back, you're just going to go by in one direction. Then what you're going to do, you're going to flip it over onto the other side of the swab and you're going to go at a horizontal direction. And now, when you're done, you're going to simply put it back into the broth and you're going to skewer it back on. But be sure not to touch the outside of this opening right here. And close it right up. Once you screw the cap back on, you're done. Now the final material that we have is the carcass swab kit. You will receive a dry sponge and sterile gloves, buffer solution, and a template. And depending on what you're swabbing, it'll either the, be the cattle template or the poultry template. Now it's a good rule of thumb to go ahead and rehydrate your sponge before you go into the area where you're gonna do the swabbing. So we're gonna go ahead and break this open. And you can pry it apart this way. And you want to leave it on a clean surface while you open up the buffer solution. Now, when you are putting in the buffer solution, do not touch the opening right here. We're just going to swoosh it in. And you're going to go ahead and start squeezing it so you can let all the juice go inside. And once you get that all done, uh, you're going to close it up so you can take it over to your swabbing area. After you've secured it, you're gonna go ahead and take your sterile gloves and your templates over to your swabbing area. Now we have this set up to represent either the cattle or the poultry. To start off, you wanna go ahead and bring your sponge all the way up to the top, and while you're doing that, make sure you squeeze out as much buffer as possible. Um, you do not want that to get all over your cattle or your poultry. Now once you've brought the sponge to the top, you're going to put it down on a clean surface. And when you do so, you're going to open up the opening with these red tabs, just so it's ready for you when you're going to swab. And hang it over on a clean surface. You're going to do the same thing with these templates. You're going to open them, and you're going to bring them up, and you're going to make them easily accessible. Now we're going to put on our sterile gloves. Open up our sterile gloves. And put these on. And it's a lot easier to wear um, some other gloves underneath the sterile gloves. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate with the cattle template. Now since I have it easily accessible to me, I'm going to take it right out. And we're going to pretend this is the cattle surface. And this is how you're going to lay it. So we also have our sponge ready, so we're going to go ahead and take that out as well. Now we're going to bring the template up to the carcass. And in one direction, we're going to go ahead and swab. Then we're going to flip it around, and we're going to go in the other direction. And now we're done. So the template is trashed now, and now you have this sponge. You're going to take back your bag and you're going to input the sponge and be sure not to touch the opening. So now you're going to expel out as much air as possible and then when you close it, you're going to go ahead and take it by these tabs over here and you're going to flip it all the way through 
And like I showed you before, you want to go ahead and close, close it by the middle. Bring your wires together and close them off. And now you're done. So the final step now is shipping. Now before you go ahead and ship all the samples over to your laboratory, you're going to go ahead and fill out your sample submission form first. And this is where you're going to write down who to send the results to, who to invoice, and what analysis you're requesting for. And once you fill that out, it's very important to put it in a Ziploc bag for shipping. And close that up. And this is to be sure that your sample submission form does not get wet during shipping. So now I'm going to show you how to pack your samples. Now, it's very good to have a large Ziploc bag in handy and put in all your samples that you just swabbed. So we're going to go ahead and put them all in and close that up as well. And now here I have a uh, flexible ice pack. Now, you may receive it like this at room temperature, but what's going to be important when you ship it, they should be rock hard, like this. So, and it's very important to also have an insulated cooler. And it already has two hard freezy packs in there. That's your first layer. Your second layer is going to be your Ziploc filled with all your samples. Then your third layer is going to be more freezy packs. And you want to put two of them there because you need to keep it as a refrigeration temperature. So your final and last layer is going to be your sample submission form. So I'm going to put that right on top. And then you're going to close up your insulated cooler. And remember, you need to send these samples to the laboratory overnight via FedEx or UPS. For more information on environmental sampling or any of our other testing services, please visit our website at abcr.com or definitely just give us a call. We look forward to hearing from you.